So hi everyone. I'm really super excited to be chatting with you this evening. I've got a really amazing chat to be talking about. Barry Myers is an enthusiast for both chemistry and physics, and he loves coming to schools, sharing his knowledge and doing these incredible demonstrations. Over the years when I was still in schools, we would regularly invite him in to come and share with the children, share his knowledge, and just get this huge interest going in terms of science. So I'm super excited to be having this chat this evening with Barry. So hi, Barry. Thank you so much for joining this evening. Hi, Karen. Yeah, it's my, my pleasure to be here. Can you tell us where this passion grew out of? Yeah, um, Karen, you know, a long time ago, a little bit uh, too long sometimes and I care to remember, um, I was invited to partake in what we call the Science Fun Day at Wits University, okay. where we um, invited a whole lot of people from various disciplines in science to come and demonstrate. It was always the last Saturday in August, once a year, oh, that's okay. what it was. And um, there was no charge um, with, for, for these uh, demos. It was done absolutely out of a love for science. And um, I believe in some days we saw over 4,000 people in, in, in wow. one day. And uh, we were allocated various lecture rooms, auditoriums, where we did our thing. We did some stuff on all areas of physics. That was my field. We had people doing medicine, biology, all that kind of stuff. And it ran probably for something like about 10 years. Wow. And I think it's so great that you go into schools now and share your passion. So what are the kinds of areas that you look at when you go into schools? What are, what are the things that you really want to showcase? Okay, well, basically, it's, it's a pretty um, broad spectrum of scientific experiments that I do. Um, my area of, uh, of interest is particularly in the electrical side of physics. And um, I'm often asked why. The reason basically is that uh, electricity is part and parcel of everything. The very atoms out of which everything is made are electrical by nature, your electrons, your protons. And um, it all kind of hangs together with uh, electricity. And um, it's quite amazing how this relates to various other topics, mechanics, uh, sound, obviously lightning and all this kind of stuff. And of course, um, you know, I, I, I try and double around in everything, you know, in physics, you've kind of got that freedom. And yes. um, also play around with a little bit of whiz-bang chemistry, which I think uh, it, it's very spectacular. And uh, the kids love that kind of thing. They love explosions, they love fiery demonstrations. So we kind of uh, really get in on that one too. That's very true that the children do love the explosions. So if a school wants to get hold of you, how do they do that? Well, they can email me, but um, I often prefer telephonic communication and uh, my number will be on the, um, you, you know, it will be available at, at the end. And uh, it's basically they can phone me or email me and, and say, look, um, you know, we, we'd be interested in, 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 uh, in having a demonstration like that. And, um, you know, what are your bookings like? So I'll try and make it very simple and um, just get hold of my diary and say, when would it be suitable for both of us? Oh, so, okay, so it's not complex at all. So what is, what is the procedure in terms of when somebody says, yes, they want you to come over? Um, what, what do you like to do? Okay, the first thing is obviously we discuss cost, um, which depends on, uh, you know, what kind of demo that I do and that kind of stuff. And then um, we also discuss very important venue. One of the uh, key features there is um, close by parking because I bring all of the equipment, most of which is homemade. Um, I bring all of that uh, myself. I, I don't like to have 
anyone helping me load because there's a specific order in which I do it. So I like to arrive at about um, two hours beforehand and um, have a look at the suitable venue, which is very often a school hall. Sometimes it's an auditorium. Sometimes it's even classroom demonstrations, depending again on uh, the number of kids that we want to uh, to have in that particular um, or during that particular demo. And I'm pretty flexible. You know, I try and fit in with the school and um, fit in with the times and this kind of thing. So these are the the, the, the key elements that we discuss. So um, you said this picture here is you doing setup. Um, what kinds of experiments were you planning to do on this particular day? Uh, that typically was a high voltage uh, setup. Uh, I was carrying a, a hundred thousand volt transformer, putting that onto the uh, the table, getting things set up. And uh, I remember this one actually very clearly because um, it kind of stands out. Uh, it was a photographer friend of mine who who took these pictures. And um, I did some electromagnetism and uh, we did uh, lightning and um, we may have done a little bit on radioactivity. I can't remember that one. We certainly did do some chemistry. And um, yeah, so there I'm setting up for an electrical one. And this one, what are you setting up for here? Haha, <laughs> that is a typical chemistry one where I show an exothermic reaction. It's a very spectacular one. And um, as you can see, uh, or as you can imagine, um, one needs to be particularly careful when you're dealing with uh, substances like that. But uh, with a little bit of experience, you get to know all the, the do's and the don'ts and the ins and the outs. And in terms of the schools, so the children don't come near any of these things. So it's on a stage and they safely away in a, in sort of in the hall or on the floor, on chairs further away. Am I right? Yeah, that's correct. But uh, on uh, many occasions, um, again, you know, it, it, according to what the experiment is, I bring them up. They they come and assist me wow. um, with my experiments so that they can actually get a little bit of uh, hands-on uh, experience as to what I'm doing. And that, again, you know, is planned depending on what uh, the experiment is. So here's a wonderful example of even during COVID that you've been able to do experiments. And I think that's really great that um, you can be sharing with the children even in spaces where there's so they can organize the social distancing and it can still carry on. So to those of you who are watching, um, it doesn't have to be a small venue, a large venue, and um, you could use Barry services to really inspire your children. I think when our children have watched them at different schools I've been at, they've just been so engaged the whole way through. That's the way that you tell your stories and get the children to really think about chemistry and physics. Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, just mention at this stage that, uh, yeah, you know, it's the old story, when there's a will, there's a way. And I found that uh, schools and, and, and teachers and principals that have really been keen on this kind of thing. We we find a way of doing it, observing the COVID protocols, and uh, we carry on. And, um, yeah, it's the that's, fun is still there. That's fantastic. So tell us what's happening here. <laughs> uh, it looks like I was doing a, a kind of a hand-waving explanation um, to a uh, lightning-like uh, demonstration. You can see the transformer with those two yellow bushings. Um, and, um, yeah, I think it was pretty clear there that I, I was doing some sort of explanation or possibly answering a question. That, that's quite likely as well. So what is this? Here you see one of my favorites. Um, that is actually homemade lightning. You're actually observing here 60,000 volt um, electric sparks. Um, this is real lightning, just scaled down. So what we're doing here is simulating what happens in a thundercloud. And uh, with a little bit of time exposure, which was taken on that one, you can actually see individual flashes of lightning. So take care of that one. It is a lot of power which has been uh, uh, exhibited there. Children must really react amazingly to these experiments. What is something that comes to mind when... Um, children have seen you 
conduct these experiments? Have any children's comments stuck with you? Yes, in fact, the very rewarding part is uh, after the show because, uh, you know, when I get some of these girls and boys coming to me and asking and saying, how can we actually do these experiments at home? Well, you know, the old story, don't try this at home, but there's a lot of stuff which they can do at home. Maybe not quite what I do, but I started by doing very simple experiments and I encourage this all the way because science is a practical subject. It is hands-on. Most importantly, science is fun and it is all the way it is experimental. And that is the message that I always try and get across. So in terms of the students and getting involved, um, why do you think it's important to have these kinds of shows in terms of just an awareness in schools? I go back to my own um, interest in science, where, where it developed. I, I feel that I always had a natural interest in science, but I can remember as a youngster, um, you know, going to various uh, exhibitions um, and museums where they had live demonstrations. And this inspired me tremendously. And I can tell you quite um, honestly that some of my demonstrations, which I use today, were actually offshoots of uh, some of the stuff that I saw as, as, as a youngster. And, um, you know, those, those are always uh, a hot favourite of mine. So do you want to tell us what we're looking at here? Yeah, here you're actually having a look at a neon tube. It's a glass tube which has uh, got neon gas in at low pressure. And I'm exciting that with a very small high voltage source and uh, demonstrating how you get different wavelengths or different colors of light which are produced by different gases in, uh, in these uh, so-called discharge tubes. That is such a beautiful photograph, such great capturing. So in terms of the chemistry, what kinds of chemistry experiments do you do? I always fancy the uh, pyrotechnic kind, um, which shows uh, release of energy. And uh, the one thing that I always stress um, right throughout these demonstrations is um, the whole um, talk about energy, potential energy, that is stored energy, how it is released, um, whether it is released as kinetic energy, as optical energy, as electrical energy, as heat energy. Um, we, we go into this in, in a lot of detail, and I know this has been covered, you know, in a lot of uh, areas of, of, of science, certainly in the senior primary group, and of course in high school, and incidentally a lot of the electromagnetism is covered in the high school syllabus as well. Um, I know that in the electrodynamics, but we go beyond this. We go into uh, experiments showing uh, the atom, and uh, which I call the silent atom, and we actually do demonstrations in nuclear physics. We don't quite design and set off an atomic bomb, but uh, we do show where it all came from. And I think that just makes it so real for the learning for children. Often the learning we do is so theoretical. So when you can see a practical example, it just makes the learning so much more beneficial. Indeed. And uh, I'd like to mention at this stage, because I think it's very fitting to do this, if you look at um, the, uh, the, 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 uh, his, the history of the great scientist Michael Faraday, who was possibly the greatest experimentalist of all time, Michael Faraday had no formal education whatsoever. In fact, um, he was a bookbinder, and he happened to come across some lectures which were given by the great scientist Sir Humphrey Davy, and he attended one of his lectures, and he was so captivated that he transcribed that entire lecture and sent it back to Davy. Davy then invited him to be uh, one of his, um, virtually one of, one of the servants, one of a, a lab assistant. And in fact, Davy's wife, who was of, uh, you know, the nobility, she didn't even allow Michael Faraday to eat. Um, he had to eat with the servants, not not eat with the, the so-called oh, wow. nobility. And um, Michael Faraday eventually became um, involved with the uh, Royal Society. He, he instituted the Christmas lectures at the Royal Society, which is still going on today. And um, apparently he was a brilliant lecturer. And uh, I've often 
um, had a great desire to uh, you know reinstate these these Christmas lectures in our country. And and I think in a way you do with going to the schools and just sparking that interest in terms of making children aware of why it's so important just to understand the basics. The other day when we were chatting, you spoke about why you really loved the background around the chemistry and the science and where it all stemmed from. And do you want to elaborate more? You started speaking now about Faraday, but you were telling some other really fascinating bits of information about why it sparked your interest, looking at history and where it comes from. Yes, well, you know, unfortunately, um, it's just the the way that uh, that things have developed. If you walk into a modern physics laboratory, uh, very often it doesn't look very interesting. You know, you will see a lot of computers and uh, a lot of stuff which uh, is kind of what we might call black box technology, but you don't really see the guts of it. And uh, it uh, it takes uh, a little bit of imagination, you know, to set up something which possibly looks a little bit like a, a Frankenstein movie. In fact, in the <laughs> early Frankenstein movies, in the early Frankenstein movies, they actually hired full time an electrical engineer to uh, develop some of the stuff because in those days they didn't have very much in the way of uh, of uh, special effects and uh, their um, sparks and their bangs were genuine and uh, these were photographed at the time so um, oh, wow. yeah we try and set up a, a laboratory that that really makes it it looks the part where you can really see things happening and um, hopefully the inspiration gets across we try yes yeah, so um, for those of you who are watching, drop your questions in if you've got any questions for Barry. And you, his telephone number and email address is both in the comments and on the banner. Reach out to him. He'll come to your school. He'll show experiments and have wonderful insights to share with your children. So if you want to know what kinds of things he does or if you've got a question, please pop it in the chat. But Barry, you were talking about the variety of different um, presentations you do. What are some of the things you've mentioned? One or two this evening. What other types of um, offerings do you offer to school? Okay, there, there is the, the the real sort of core um, demonstration, which I find very popular, uh, and um, you know a lot of stuff is, is worked around that. Um, but uh, what I find also, which I haven't mentioned, extremely popular is uh, the study of waves, where we show standing waves in a column of gas, where you can actually see the flames showing the uh, nodes and antinodes. That, that is very popular. And so I kind of go outside of the uh, audible spectrum into a little bit of ultrasound, which, of course, has tremendous uh, applications in, uh, in, uh, in medicine. And... Um, I show things as well, like invisible light, um, fluorescence, uh, which I tie up with, with x-rays and electrons, so we get onto the nuclear side of things, and um, a little bit on uh, mechanics as well, gyroscopes, this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, if the school has seen one particular demonstration, um, I complement that possibly in the following year, with another demonstration. So they see different stuff. Even in the electrical side, there are many different experiments, uh, different aspects which I showed, generation of radio waves and uh, how this applies to cell phones and uh, microwave ovens. So, you know, it's it's wide. And I find that as I research this kind of stuff, you know, sometimes you think, well, is there any, are there any more demonstrations to do? And it's amazing. They just come up. It's just a question of uh, how far does your imagination stretch? So if, we, if we're thinking about that in terms of schools, if a school um, was thinking that they could use you a few times looking at different grades and the content related to grades, you could customize um, workshops and demonstrations related to different grades. So you could come back to a school a few times looking at what's happening in different grades, could you? We can do that. I don't run uh, work workshops as such because that is a is a speciality of its own. You know, then you have a whole lot of kids which uh, you have to provide equipment for. And I, I think to a large extent, um, you know, that, that has been done. Uh, however, what we have done lately um, is done um, 
kind of classroom demonstrations where we have smaller groups um, observing at uh, at short distances. And when you have a smaller group like that, you can definitely, you know, you can draw your audience in um, in a very much uh, better way than you can when you're giving a demonstration lecture, say, in a, in a hall with 500 people. Yes. So, I mean, I have done lectures even in in, in, uh, in dedicated theatres where we have five or 600 people at a time. And I've also done demonstrations where we literally have eight students. Wow. So I think, um, I suppose what you're trying to say is that you off, you customise your um, demonstration lectures to really suit the audience and to suit the school's needs. I try to do that as far as possible. Do you want to tell us what we're looking at here? Um, yes. Um, here you are looking at... Um, an exothermic reaction. In fact, in this particular case, I deal with a chlorate compound. The chlorates are um, very, very powerful oxidizing agents. And uh, I release that energy um, in a form where you get um, a massive flame. And uh, I can choose to color that flame as well by adding certain um, chemical elements to that. And uh, it's also a particularly um, popular one as you can see. And what's happening that, here? Yeah, in that one, um, in, in fact, it's quite nice. That's a nice experiment because it shows how the various disciplines of science can be combined. I show an electrical power arc, which is high voltage. It produces a flame, which um, again shows a lot of electrical physics, but um, as a little um, corollary to this one, um, I also show a flame which is induced over various chemical compounds and the color of the flame depends on the actual compound and uh, that can fingerprint or identify the chemical compound. So there you have a nice combination of, of uh, electricity, optics, light and chemistry. That's, that's such a good combination in making learning really real for the students. In terms of um, getting students involved, I believe that your daughter, Leora, has learned how to do some of the experiments and that she's really excited about learning about the chemistry and physics as well. Do you want to share a bit about that? Yes, let me introduce her to you. Let her get into the, the, the field here. All right. Come in a little bit more. Well, hello, everyone. So I am Leora Myers. I am Barry's daughter. And as my dad is like a huge, he's amazing scientist and everything, I have like grown up with science. I've always like had a big passion for science because I've always been like exposed to this kind of thing. And I've actually appeared in some of his demonstrations. I've done a few experiments. I've also done some of my own um, shows. And it really is amazing. I really encourage you to contact Barry and to get involved, get all your students um have demonstrations because he really is amazing and it really does inspire the children like coming from me because I am like a young um, I'm a young child now I'm a girl and also you know even girls can be interested in science it's not only like a boy thing like I'm really 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 excited for all of this because it's just incredible and I really encourage you because Barry he will literally inspire so many students and get so many people involved in science because a lot of people find that science is just boring it's just you know a classroom subject and all of that but when you actually see it you actually see experiments it's physical it's amazing it's incredible it's like magic but it's not magic it is science so i'm sure that all the lovely children will be so inspired and so interested in this wonderful creative demonstration so thank you so much so leora don't go don't go don't go okay. don't go so that was a great punt for your dad what i want to know is so what experiment do you love most doing well, I love so many of the experiments, but my number one favorite, probably the one that I absolutely love the most, is the test tube rocket. So that is when you have like a test tube and you um, put in the solution and you actually light it up and it makes a magnificent glow, a beautiful 
such like rocket and it is so incredible it is a spectacular experiment it's one that i have actually done myself many many times and it's very popular amongst the students they absolutely go mad for the experiment they so, love it and yeah it's incredible so why do you like it what what's well, the science thing that you like about it well i just like the amazing reaction because science um as Barry, as he does, he even can do demonstrations for young kids such as grade R's because he can adapt his demonstrations that you don't need to explain so much of the science. It's just spectacular. So a lot of the students, you, they, their faces light up by the actual, it, it's an amazing glow. There's beautiful, beautiful, the reaction um, when you add the chemicals into the actual test tube it just explodes and there's lots of colors and fireworks and it's just incredible and my dad he can explain the science part to it of how it actually works i must just um, tell you something as well you know that my daughter is a, a budding actress she's been in quite a few shows and believe me you know, when, when you're on the stage doing science demonstrations, um, you're an actor and an actress, apart from other things. <laughs> That's very, very true. In terms of um, involving the children, what are the kinds of experiments would you call the children up for? So what are some of the ones that you might call the children up for to help you with in your shows, Barry? Okay, the one that uh, immediately comes to mind is uh, where I take a coil of wire. So it's it's a nice large one that everyone can see. And uh, they put it over a, um, a steel core consisting of steel rods. And um, through electromagnetism, I get one of the kids to actually just put it over that steel rod and it floats in midair. So it actually levitates. And uh, when they see that, um, you, you, you see some big smiles on their faces and, and total <laughs> astonishment sometimes. And, um, yeah, I used to do that always on my own. And then I suddenly thought, no, this is crazy. I must get the kids to do it. And uh, when they do that, it's, it's an all-time favorite, yeah. So if you um, are thinking in terms of high school children, do you actually then tell them about the chemicals and things that you, you're using do you actually then inform them about what you're doing? So how much of a learning space other than just spectacular does it become as the children get older? Oh, yes. I mean, every, um, you know, you, you, you get to feel it out. I deal with audiences sometimes, irrespective of age, where I can tell that these kids are, they are with it. They never underestimate their, their, their potential and their understanding of stuff. And uh, I can feel it. I can feel it through. And very often, um, as I'm doing a lecture, I either put in or leave out according as I, I feel it's, it, it's going down. And, um, oh, yes, no, there's, there, there's a tremendous amount of, from the education side of it, uh, not only in high school, but in primary school as well, where I certainly mention things. In fact, very often I get questions, you know, people saying, hey, you know, what is the chemical that you're using here? How readily available is it how dangerous is it you know how do you handle it this kind of stuff and um yeah very definitely so again it it, it varies entirely um on the lecture and very often i give at one school the same lecture to different groups but i pitch it to totally different levels i can use that lecture for matrix i can use it for grade threes it it, it just um it's it's the way it's presented this is the important thing that's very, very true. So I just want to say, as we um, end off, and um, in terms of this evening, what is the kind of thing that you really want to say to teachers why they should create a huge interest in both chemistry and physics for their children? Why should we encourage more children to go into physics and chemistry? Well, I, I feel, you know, different people obviously have got different gifts, they've got different talents. And uh, I, I'm, you know, if a kid, and, and I say this even in, in, with regard to my own daughter, you know, I mean, I've, I've never forced her in any way um, to do something that I want her to do. She must have that desire herself. And um, there are plenty of kids that uh, they want to become artists, they want to become musicians. That's fantastic. It's great. But this is an all-round education because science involves everything that we do. I stress that, you know, from walking into the kitchen to the human body to everything. So we cannot 
ever get away from science. That is key important. So, you know, that that's that that that's absolute. But then again, um if uh, if they want to carry on further, if they've got that that interest, it's a natural interest, hopefully this will ignite it. And so that's why I try and do a broad based kind of demonstration that will be applicable to the kids who are going to go further with science and those who are not. And uh, quite often I get schools, I get requests saying, can we bring in some of the kids who are not doing science to see what science is all about? And I say, yeah. absolutely, with pleasure. Yeah. And I think that's so true. I mean, because some people might not do it as a subject at school, but might have an interest in it. And it might end up that they do it after school. So bringing other children in just makes so much sense as well. And as you yeah. say, it's everything around us. So it's just by exposing as many children as possible to the demonstrations, what we're doing too is you're just building knowledge around where science is around us that people might not realize or think of things as science. So some people might not think of lightning as science and yet it's completely embedded in what it is. And explaining it physically to the children, it just sparks all sorts of new ideas and creates other interests. And of course, science is a fantastic hobby. I mean, that's what it all started off with, with me. Um, I mean, I have been involved in it professionally, but uh, I still tend to call myself an amateur scientist because uh, I play around, you know, as an amateur with things. And, you know, if you look in the field of astronomy, many fantastic discoveries have been made by am amateur astronomers. Um, yeah. which have had the, the, the professionals looking and saying, wow. So, um, Wazi is saying, this is awesome, hoping to see you in our rural schools. So, how can those schools get hold of you as well? Barry, so Wazi, the details are here. Give Barry a call, Wazi, and see if you can set something up. Yeah, look, uh, all schools are, are, are welcome. We can always discuss you know, the various uh, logistics behind it. And um, yeah, it's it's just a matter of uh, seeing what, what we can, what we can arrange. So, so if we're looking at in terms of what people are saying, they're really inspired by what you are saying this evening, um, Barry. I really just want to say thank you for your time and for um, coming on and for sharing this resource that you just share with everybody when you go to schools. I know the students who I've um, had engaged with you over the years have just loved your presentations. Have you got a closing remark for the chat? <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for um, inviting me on this. And uh, it's been my pleasure, and I really appreciate, um, you know, what what you've done. And uh, yeah, for a little closing remark, I think I did mention it before, but um, let me say this: science is fun. It is. It is. So, um, thanks to those of you who've been engaging this evening. Thanks for um, popping in and and sharing the chat with us, Barry. I really appreciate your time, and thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to end the broadcast. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot.